This video is dedicated to only monitoring persistent volumes that you attach to the pods, for example, using a stateful set. In this Grafana dashboard that we're going to create, you can find volume usage, inodes usage, and also the status of the persistent volumes and claims. Especially, it's important to monitor and alert if one of your claims is stuck in the pending state. To monitor volumes, we'll use two sources. The first one is a kubelet, which is the main agent installed on each Kubernetes node and responsible for running containers. To scrape kubelet, we'll deploy Prometheus operator, which will create and maintain endpoints object for kubelet that keeps track of all nodes. Then using the operator, we'll deploy Prometheus itself and create a service monitor to scrape kubelets. We'll only use a small subset of the metrics related to volumes that kubelet exposes. I'll show you how to use the rest in the following videos. Metrics received from kubelet can be used to monitor volume and inode usage. To monitor the status of the persistent volumes, such as bound or pending, we'll install another monitoring component, which is called kube state metrics. It will scrape the Kubernetes API server to get the status of the Kubernetes components, including volumes and claims. Finally, we'll deploy Grafana and create a few dashboards. You can find the source code in my GitHub repository, including Terraform to reproduce this example. First, we need to create all custom resources for Prometheus operator. It includes monitoring namespace and some airbug policies. Next, we need to install Prometheus operator and Prometheus itself. In the operator deployment, you'll find kubelet service that will be created in the kube system namespace which eventually will scrape with Prometheus. Now let's go ahead and apply all of it by adding dash "-r flag". In the terminal, you can find the kubelet endpoints after you deploy the operator. If you describe the endpoints, you'll find a couple of ports, HTTP and HTTPS metrics. On some Kubernetes clusters, such as EKS, you can access only HTTPS endpoints. If you try to scrape HTTP, you'll get a connection refused error. Since we don't have any ingresses, let's use port forward to expose Prometheus server. In the browser, you can go to localhost 9090 to access Prometheus UI. At this point, you should not have any targets. Let's create the first service monitor object to scrape kubelet. It's going to be in the monitoring namespace. We'll use HTTPS endpoint. You must use the port name from the endpoints object. The schema HTTPS as well. To validate the target certificate, since it's a HTTPS, we can either use built in to the pod certificate authority or skip verification. The first approach is preferred. Now, Prometheus also should have airbag policy associated with its service account. And to provide it to the target, we need to access it using the token that is also inside the pod. Then select the namespace where we have the kubelet endpoints and use endpoints labels. The endpoints object is automatically created by the Kubernetes service in our case. Let's apply the kubelet service monitor. As I mentioned, we need to use the token in the service monitor object in order to get access for the following resources. Otherwise, we'll get access denied. In a few seconds, a new target should show up in the Prometheus UI. We have two nodes in the cluster and two corresponding endpoints. If you type volume in the Prometheus metric explorer, you'll find the metrics that we're going to use for our dashboard. Let's run the query for capacity bytes. This should give us the size of the volume that is attached to the Prometheus pod already. If we convert bytes to gigabytes, we'll get the 20 gigabyte volume that attached to the pod. You can compare it with a request from the YAML object that we used to deploy Prometheus. Next is Grafana. I included the volumes dashboard using the config map. Other than that, it's pretty standard deployment that also uses persistent volume to persist data between restarts. Let's go ahead and deploy Grafana. We can use a similar port forward command to expose Grafana locally. The username is admin and the password is devops123. You can update it in the Grafana secret but don't forget to encode it in base64. First of all, let's make sure that the data source is working. We also configured it using config map. Now let's create the dashboard. Click on add a new panel, then give it a name, persistent volume usage. Select Prometheus data source. We called it main. Optionally, you can reduce the time interval. 
To calculate the resistant volume usage in percentage, you can divide used bytes by capacity bytes. It will give us a value between 0 and 1. You can multiply it by 100 or you can use Grafana unit type to perform this operation. For now, we're going to create a chart that covers all the namespaces in Kubernetes. We have two volumes in our cluster, one for Prometheus, which is in monitoring namespace, and another one for Grafana in Grafana namespace. Let's use a persistent volume claim label for the Grafana legend. Switch from auto to custom and paste the label. To update the chart, you can click anywhere outside the query or label. I like to have the legend as a table on the right hand side. And I use the last non-null value. For the unit, select percent between 0 and 1. Also, you can remove additional decimal points by using one value. That's pretty much all for the first chart. You can also set up auto refresh for 5 to 10 seconds. Now let's test the dashboard. We can SSH to one of the pods with the persistent volume and generate some load. Let's SSH to the Prometheus pod. To check the current disk usage, you can use DF and H for human readable. Our volume is mounted under Prometheus path and the current usage is almost zero. To simulate a disk usage, we can use DD command and create a file. Each block will be one gigabyte in size and we're going to create 10 of those blocks. So it should produce 20 gigabytes. Let's run it and switch to Grafana. The scrape interval is set for 30 seconds, so it will take a minute or so to show up in Grafana. All right, so it shows 51%. Let's confirm it in the pod. DF-H utility shows the same usage. We can create another dashboard for inode usage. I'll skip it since it's very similar to volume usage, but you can find it in my GitHub repo. If you have a lot of volumes, you may want to filter them by namespace. Let's do that by creating a dynamic Grafana variable. Now, if you want to only create variables with namespaces where you have the volumes, Use, for example, capacity bytes metric, since it only shows up for the namespaces where you have the volumes. If you want to switch between all namespaces available in Kubernetes, use maybe the memory usage metric provided by CI Advisor, or even select one from cube state metrics. We have two volumes in Grafana and monitoring namespace. Let's use this metric. In Grafana, go to dashboard settings and create a new variable. Let's call it namespace. Select Prometheus data source and use label values Grafana function. The first argument is the metric name and the second one is a label that you want to get. You can immediately see values monitoring and Grafana. Now create a new dashboard that will use that variable. Persistent volume usage per namespace. To filter by namespace, just use the namespace Grafana variable. The rest of it is the same. Use persistent volume claim as a value for legend. Then table mode is on the right hand side. Same volume. The same percent unit between 0 and 1. If I would create an alert based on this condition, I would prefer to multiply it by 100 instead. At this point, you can switch variable name to filter metrics. To monitor the status of the volume and claims, we need to deploy another component cube state metrics. Let's go ahead and apply. In the Prometheus target section, you should see a new cube state metrics target with a single endpoint. Metrics provided by cube state metrics start with cube underscore. In the next Grafana pane, we'll use persistent volume claim metric. Let's call it status by phase, since it's a label name of the metric. Here I'll give you an idea of how you may use it, but you should adapt it to your needs. The way this metric works is the following. If the phase is pending, for example, the value will be 1. If there are no pending pods in your cluster, the value of this metric with this label is 0. 
I suggest you use this condition and set up alert. For example, if there is a persistent volume claim in a pending state for longer than one minute, I want to be notified. This metric also has the lost phase. You may want to use it as well. And the last one is bound, which indicates that this volume claim is properly configured. We have the two bound volume claims, Grafana and Prometheus. I'm not going to change anything here. I'll leave it to you. So this pane is for persistent volume claims. The next one is for persistent volumes. It's very similar logic. The only difference is that this metric has more phases. The first one is bound, which means volume is attached to the pot. The next one is failed. I'll use the same legend value in all of them. Pending status. Available. And finally released. Now let's test the volume claim. Let's create a new persistent volume claim for Kafka in the default namespace. Since it's not going to be consumed and attached by the pod, it should stay in pending state. After you apply it in a few seconds, you should have a pending Kafka claim. In the following video, I'll show you how to monitor CPU, memory, network, and other parameters of the pod that you run in your Kubernetes clusters. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.